Hi, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of the Shop Notes podcast. I'm your host, Phil, along with John and Logan today. Uh, it's episode number 188. In today's episode, we're going to discuss some oddball clamps. The fallout of a sawmilling experience weekend, our continued fascination with Sprecher's Root Beer and Cheese, and so, so much more. You want a glue that you can trust, and fortunately, Type Bond has the glue you need to get the job done with confidence. From interior glues with strong initial tack and short clamp time, to exterior glues with exceptional strength and water resistance, look to Type Bond, the right glue for your next project. For more information, visit TypeBond.com. When we last were with our intrepid crew, one of them was getting ready for a sawmilling experience. And now we are after that event. How was it, So how John? did that go? <laughs> it was John. That doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, so mm-hmm. one of our uh, listeners came down from uh, the great state of Wisconsin um, and uh, took a tour of the shop uh, on Friday. And then we did lunch at the Cheese Bar, which, of course, is my favorite lunch spot in Des Moines. You can fight me on that if you want. Um, <laughs> and then Saturday, Bob came out here and we did messed around with some of his planes uh, and then we broke out the sawmill, got it out of the shop. And it was, it was funny. You could tell it was the first time I had the sawmill out this year because I started pulling it out. I'm like, huh, where's my crank handle to raise and lower the head? <laughs> like there's just a shaft sticking out. And I'm like, I kind of remember pulling this thing off, but I kind of don't. And so we're, we're kind of looking around for it. Bob's like, what color is it? I'm like, I think it's orange. I'm like, no, it's silver with a black handle. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to grab channel locks, and we're just going to rotate it with vite, with handles. All right. I found it, and we put it on. Uh, and went to fill up my water and remembered last time I was out running it, I dropped the plug out of the bottom of my water container. So, like, there was a hole, open hole in the bottom. So, I'm like, well, I got a screw and some Teflon tape. (laughs) So, we made a plug, shoved it in there. I was like, yeah, this is real life saw milling. Um, You just kind of make it work. You go full Alaskan on it. And, yeah, it was great. We we pulled up, pulled a walnut log off of my trailer. uh, And we cut it in twain. It was 14 foot long. Uh, So, we, I was like, I'm going to send all this lumber back with Bob. So we cut it to seven and uh, like seven and a quarter feet a piece, and we cut it. Yeah, and it was awesome. Beautiful, right. beautiful walnut log. So, yeah, it was fun. Um, so Bob got to see a little bit of the the sawmilling works, kind of how how I position stuff, how it gets cut. Let Bob run the mill, which was was really cool. I just stood off to the side and just was like, <laughs> occasionally grab a board. Like this is easy, man. <laughs> like. <laughs> It's the actual pushing and and work that sucks. It doesn't suck, but you know. Yeah. So was there? What kind of was there any kind of a high points or something that he was looking for specifically, or you know, like sometimes you do a presentation or a class and you have an idea of where it goes, but then because of the audience, it kind of drifts with a special emphasis or anything. Yeah. Or? I don't think so. I think it was more of, I think, uh, you know, just hanging out and kind of getting some hands on with some of the stuff, you know, plane restoration and sawmilling and stuff. So yeah. Okay. No, it was awesome. I, uh, I felt bad because we had friends coming in from out of town. So it's like, it had to be, it had to be done at five, um, four 35, something like that. And then they were here all Sunday as well. So it's like, well, I wish I would have known that, or realize that Bob was staying the entire weekend because then I, I would have like blocked my entire weekend. Um, but no, I think it was good. I think he enjoyed it. Um, we got loaded up on freaking Wisconsin cheese and root beer and beer, um, which was awesome. So right. Sprecher's maple, one of my favorites. <laughs> right. And Sprecher's has a blonde 
which I did not know about. Yeah, like a barrel aged blonde root yeah. beer. Have you tried one of them yet? I have not. Okay. No, so I'm going to have to. Two left in there. It says like 25% or 50% um, brown sugar. Yeah. And then the re- remainder is cane sugar. Um, yeah. But it's aged in barrels. You know, I. I don't taste any barrel aging on it, <laughs> but it is delicious. Um, Bailey said when she tried the one I had yesterday, she's like, I kind of get like a cream soda vibe out of it. And it does a little bit. And I don't know okay. if it's just like the association with the color. Yeah. You know, but yeah. What kind of, what kind of notes are you looking for, for, for barrel age that you would, that you'd be able to pick out? I think, so it depends on if it's like, so like if you get a barrel aged beer, Usually it's barrel aged in bourbon barrels, so there's definitely a bourbon flavor. Right. And I don't know that that's what they were going for off that, but I feel like if you are barrel aging something, it's going to be in a white oak barrel, you should get a little bit of oakiness on it, right? Okay. Like kind of that, that flavor you get as your mill and oak lumber. Right. I'm kind that of like, expecting some of that. Yeah, that, that little white oak. Oh, that's white oak, little little white oak <laughs> dust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting that and I didn't get any of that. So Okay. Yeah. All right, that's fair. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then the beer was there was a Sprecher's made beer which makes sense, but also I've only I've only encountered Sprecher's through their their root beer and other yeah, novelty sodas. Yep. So we will. That's in the fridge, right? So we yes, are going that's in the to fridge. give that a go. I know. Yeah. Dylan and myself are beer drinkers. John will occasionally have a beer. Yeah. Phil, you're not a very big beer drinker. No, I have Sprecher, on occasion. So you kind of Sprecher- got I feel like yeah. I'm going to have to try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They all, he also left a uh, New Glarus Brewing mm-hmm. Spotted Cow. Yep. So, which my connection with New Glarus is. Uh, one side of my people are from Switzerland and New Glarus, Wisconsin is actually a Swiss enclave. Mm-hmm. So pretty, pretty interesting there. Interesting. So, and maybe the best thing was all the cheese. Yes. Yeah. There was lots of cheese. Yes. Yeah. We cracked open. What was it? The 15 year aged cheddar. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's pretty oh, sharp. Yeah. It was, oh, yeah. Not too sharp. No. no, it was really good. There was a maple bacon cheddar as well, mm-hmm. which I thought was really good and had unexpected yep. onion notes in it. Well, uh, that one wasn't, I think that was just bacon and cheddar, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just bacon and cheddar. That was and cheddar, ba- right. bacon and cheddar, but it had onions and what else? Pickles. Pickles. Pickles, Pickles. Yeah. yes. Yes, which is so it's like a cheeseburger cheese. Yeah, it's like a bacon cheeseburger. Yeah, so. but just in the cheese. Just in yeah. the cheese. So you but just slice a, that yeah. and put it on a cheeseburger. Yes, but there is there is a maple cheese in there. I think. Right. Is a, I think that's where I, I was. Is it a maple it. bourbon cheese? Possibly. Maybe. So there's <laughs> lots of cheese. Oh yeah, but to be fair. We are all cheese connoisseurs, right? Like right. in the studio, like when we when we cracked those open yesterday when we were filming, yeah, everybody was dipping their finger in the cheese. If you know what I mean. <laughs> so. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> My wife asks me this all the time. Yeah, She's I like, know. "No, I, I don't know what you mean by that. Can you explain okay. further?" Yeah. And I don't want to. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> nope, because it's the more words I add, just the worse it gets. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So in last week's podcast, uh, John wasn't here for that, but we had talked about on the front end of it is would this be something that other people would be interested in doing as a sawmill weekend? And you heard from several people, right? I heard from a lot of people saying, if you're doing a sawmilling weekend, sign us up. So logistically, there's some questions there. Like, right. How many people I mean, at a time can you do? Oh, we can have as many people as we want. It's like, where we got parking? Um, yeah. And it's like, what are we doing is the question. It's like, to me, all of us kind of as educators, like we want it to be educational. Like we want people to come and see it, experience it, learn and understand from it. Right. Right. Um, 
But I also think it would be cool if people come and we did this as a, you know, weekend sawmilling retreat. You know, we, we look at different types of sawmilling. You know, I can get the chainsaw mill out. We can do a big log. Um, but then also do, like, uh, the, the bandsaw mill. You know, everybody kind of gets to run the mill. Uh, I'd love to send people home with the lumber that they cut. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, hey – Come, come, learn sawmilling for a weekend, and you're gonna go home with you know 100 board feet of lumber. Um, I think that'd be that would be super cool. It's gonna be green, so people are gonna get the experience of drying it themselves, and sealing it, and stickering it, and doing all that stuff. Like, I think that'd be cool. Um, now, obviously, sorry, all I ain't giving my logs away for free, so. <laughs> You know, clearly we'd have to we'd have to charge something for it. You know, for like a weekend class or whatever. We we would you know we would do our internal marketing stuff, whatever. But I think it'd be interesting, and I heard from a lot of people say, "Heck yeah!" Now, do people just want to come and sawmill for the weekend and be basically free labor for me? <laughs> yeah, let's do that too. <laughs> like you sign up for one of the two weekends, you either sign up for the free weekend when you get no wood, you're just labor, <laughs> and or you sign up for the weekend where you bring home lumber. So I don't it's know the Tom be... Sawyer, <laughs> yeah, sawmilling weekend. Yes, yes, that's, that's right. exactly what it is. Yeah. Yep. So yes, yeah, so I don't know. It's I. I think Phil, you kind of made the the comment like off the cuff, but it seems to have gotten legs. So we might we might see where it goes. I think it would be kind of cool. I don't, I John. Would... You've been you've been kind of free labor for Logan on a couple mm-hmm. of videos for yep. sawing and for the TV show episode that we did. If you were to knowing what you know, what would you look for in a in a sawmilling weekend class. Oh, I don't know. Is there going to be beer and cheese there? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Clearly. Maybe that would be like the evening of the first night is less like yep, beer right. and cheese. Yep. No, oh, yeah. It's not too bad. It's pre- actually pretty, it's more educational than, than work. Of course I wasn't doing this in the middle of summer. Well, either, and that's, that's the other mostly, thing is like, yeah. when do you do it? Yeah. 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 August. Yeah, you, getting the logs up and up and down are the main things and the the sawmill does most of the work so yeah well yeah. and if i'm doing it you know for if, if we're doing that here in the shop you know you got a tractor <laughs> like i'm right. not lifting logs if i don't have yeah. to <laughs> yeah but no it, it would be i think it would be cool um yeah we sawmill in the summer kind of sucks because it's sweaty and mm-hmm. when you're sweaty and when you're wet sawdust really likes to stick to you and then it gets really itchy um but that's part of the experience right right yep. like it's yeah. like going to scout camp part of the experience is using the latrine when there's mosquitoes all over <laughs> it builds character <laughs> it does i built something all right <laughs> So, but definitely shoulder seasons. So yes, September yes, and October, even yeah. late August, I think is decent enough. And yeah. and then spring. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. we'll put it on the, I think we put it on the list. We were talking to yeah. Logan and I were messaging with our new supervisor, manager, Rob Yeager. Uh, president, uh, vice president of content, I believe is his name. Yes. Senior senior vice president of content. I was trying to decide if <laughs> I was trying to decide if it's content or if he's just senior vice president content. Yeah. <laughs> could be. So. So, he seemed excited about it, so we'll have to uh, have yeah, to see where this goes. He's a content nerd like we are though, so. Yeah. And in kind of a weird this feels like something you could do that would be totally clickbait. Like try this one weird trick if you mill your own lumber. <laughs> but at home we were cleaning out the basement and came across a bunch of candles that we had that we weren't going to burn anymore. And I brought some in here because occasionally when we're filming, we'll burn a couple of candles or whatever. And a couple of people on the crew have candles, but you Logan were very interested in the partially burned candles yeah. for a very odd reason. 
Can I go get my odd reason real quick? Yes. <laughs> okay, Please hold do. on. I have it. I have it. A little word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Tight Bond. You want a glue that you can trust, and fortunately, Tight Bond has the glue you need to get the job done with confidence. From interior glues with strong initial tack and short clamp time to exterior glues with exceptional strength and water resistance, look to Tight Bond, the right glue for your next project. For more information, visit tightbond.com. Okay, so my my crock pot is out. My crock pot's out in the cold storage side, but this is what I do with them. So this, well, you can see there were some cracks on there um, okay. that I also sealed. Mm -hmm. So I, when my, probably when my grandma passed away, probably five years ago, I ended up um, with a big tote of her <laughs> half-used candles, okay? I don't know why you don't just throw them away when you're done with them. But, like, she had all these half-used candles. Uh, Phil, your wife also had some half-used candles. Right. Um, and what I started doing was sealing the ends of turning blanks, like so, with with the wax. Now, when you go buy a turning blank in the store, you get this, uh, you get this paraffin wax dipped blank. So it's just covered in wax, and it's, it's pure paraffin. Um... Paraffin's not what I call super expensive. Like, I think you can buy, like, a 10-pound block of paraffin for, you know, 15 bucks. And 10 pounds of wax will go a long ways. Right. Um, but I'm like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to melt these down and use these to seal my turning blanks. Um, so that's what I do. So, like, I have, if I, oh, if I have, like... Actually, some of the first stuff I sealed with this wax was, uh, Phil, when we took down that maple tree at your house, I took oh, a yeah. couple sections that had some, like, figure in them. Uh, and you actually, you used some for some stuff, too. Yeah. Um, and I ended up sealing them. So I, I, I bought a crock pot, probably at Goodwill or, like, Salvation Army or something, for, you know, three or four bucks. And I just started melting wax in it. So right now, it's it's this old, nasty crock pot <laughs> That's three quarters full of wax. You turn it on high. It takes like an hour to melt all of the wax. Um, and then you can, if your blanks are small enough, you can just dip them in there. And I I discovered, though, that you have to, um, you have to dip the end grain. And if it's a wet piece of wood, like, like, like freshly sawn, you have to dip the end grain, let it sit in there for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds, pull it out, and then dip it again and let it sit for another 15 or 20 seconds. Because I think the heat flashes off some of the, the moisture, so okay. you get separation. Um, this one here is actually pretty good, but it's actually starting to like uh, peel. Like right here, I can get my finger underneath that wax and kind of start peeling it off. Right, um, like a sunburn. Like a sunburn, that's right. Uh, and... Yeah, but I'm like, you know, when I see a big thing of of candles that Becky's going through, and she's like, I don't want this one, I don't want this one. I'm like, throw them this way, because I'll I'll use those, I'll use that wax to seal stuff. And it the, it, it it smells like my grandma's house because it just smells like <laughs> every candle in Bed Bath and Beyond lit at once. Right. Um, I now to be completely fair, I do have end grain sealer. Like I have five gallon buckets full of anchor seal. I actually have a backpack sprayer that I put anchor seal in to seal the ends of logs. So like if we're doing a big logging job and we get a bunch of logs, I'll cut all the ends and just sit there and spray them with a backpack sprayer. Um, it's really messy though. It's like really messy just for a couple of little turning blanks. It's like trying to paint on a thin Elmer's glue. It's just, it's just messy. Hmm. This is, this is so much easier, especially if I, right. if I know I'm cutting a bunch of blanks, I'll, just get it done. Yeah, it works out. It works out great. All right. So, That's cool. Yeah. It was yeah. just kind of funny going into the kitchen this morning and <laughs> having that that collected aroma of 12 different candles yeah. all at once. It's very floral, perfumey, chemical, all yes. in there. Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. All right. Yeah. And I know someone will ask that, like the, the 
the color of the wax doesn't seem to transfer to the wood at all. So, like, I had wondered that because the first the first blanks I said that were maple and they're were, they were white. Yeah, doesn't the color does not leach in at all? Okay, so I was I was worried about that. Uh, sure, but yeah, yep. Everybody doing their part. That's. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was kind of cool. I mean, I've seen, you know, you go to uh, like a hardwood lumber dealer and sometimes you'll find like small exotics where they're pretty much just coated in wax too. Kind of yeah. mm-hmm. like some tropical vegetables, you know, when they come and it's just got the wax yeah. coating on it. But Yeah. And if you do pick up a blank, and this is something that not a lot of people understand. If you pick up a blank and it is completely wax sealed, it will never dry. It will be wet forever. Yeah. Like, it's not like the the water does not permeate through the wax and dry out. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, if just the end grain is sealed, then a lot of times it will dry out. It'll dry out slowly. Yeah. Um, so, like, this this walnut blank here. Ah, this was this was a piece of a walnut root ball. This was actually the tap root. Um, I sealed the ends, and you could still see... For those of you watching, you see that big crack on it? So it is still still drying out and cracking on the sides. So I'm going to need to turn this sometime sooner rather than later. Okay. So the purpose is just to seal the end grain so we'll, yeah. moisture doesn't escape quickly and then you get the cracking on the ends. Yeah, You exactly. want it to escape from the sides the slowly yep. but not from the end because it'll go too bingo. quick. And then... Yep, bingo. And the reason that that is cracking on that face is because that's the face where there's a lot of figure. So it's a lot of end grain coming through. So yeah. that's why that it, that side is cracking. The sides that have all side grain and no end grain, not a single crack on them. Okay. So unfortunately, it's the pretty side that's starting to crack. Well, there you go. Well, you can just epoxy fill it or something or... Yeah. So is it going to be a bowl then, or it's going to be a bowls? hollow form? I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be some form of like vase, vase, maybe. If I'm feeling fancy that day, mm-hmm. we we did one out of them. Um, my buddy Greg did one, and this was the second blank that we had. And I was like, I'll just seal it. I don't, I don't have time to get to it. Time's slipping away slowly. Yep. So you slipping. when you're. When you're working with root material or root balls like that, does your tools dull quicker, do you noticeably, or not necessarily? No, no. Um, I don't think uh, so. Uh, Jared, our friend that had this root ball, he did a pretty good job of. Um, he picked up this root ball with a skid loader and dropped it about seventy times, and it shook a lot of <laughs> rocks and dirt out of it. Mm-hmm. Then he took it to the car wash. Um, if you're a local car wash owner in Des Moines, he did not do this, but he took it to a car wash and, <laughs> and, and pressure washed it. <laughs> and it was it was pretty big. Uh, and so he got most of the dirt off that way. But we did still we did still when we were chainsawing it into blanks, we did still find pockets of like n- not mud, but like packed in dirt inside of it. So there's always a potential. Right. But no, like like the wood itself, unless I hit something, I don't notice it, it being any different. Okay. So we did – I did turn um, – my big shield that I have in the house hanging in the stairwell, that's a buckeye burl. And that was kind of like a root burl. So it was like one of them that was like kind of half hidden in the dirt, you know. And uh, I bought that – pre-cut it was cut into a big round you know and i did find when i was turning that we found we did find like like limestone embedded inside of it so like you'd be cutting it all of a sudden you'd, you'd see a, a spark fly around and you're like well i hit something then you'd stop and there'd be a piece of like what looks like gravel sticking out of a, a little void in the in the root so you know comes with the territory though Yep. All right. So to continue on the semi-related sawmilling theme and also something that we brought up a little while ago, probably last year on the podcast, is uh, we're working on a project for the TV show that uses red oak. Mm -hmm. And 
typically Red Oak is not well executed to be charitable. But you had an adventure, Logan, in sawing a red oak tree and then John converted one of those boards into project parts today. So how was that, John, in working with that particular board? Um, I don't think it was any worse than, you know, most of the stuff Logan brings in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't no, argue with you it's either. Because you brought walnut in yesterday and that like looked really good it's it's just like you you bring in these big slabs and there's usually a lot of cracks and checking down the center where the you know the pith of the tree is and that's yeah. natural and they're all grayed and weathered and i mean you'd look at this board outside and be oh this isn't going to be like a good you know piece of furniture or whatever you bring it in you know you clean that all get you know rid of the cracks and the checking you get through the the surface patina and weathering and it's like something you would pick up at any, you know, lumber store that's been milled and looks yeah. great and you just kind of cut around the knots and the defects and so it's it's yeah. like we've mentioned before it's always it's always uh satisfying that the enjoyment of the discovery of you know getting the yeah. the the wood from from the tree so I I like I like uh one of you guys said it earlier today you feel dressed it Yep. yep. So it was like it was like field dressing left, a deer. You get rid of all, all the stuff the you don't want. Innards and, yeah. bones and wrestle in the garbage, but yeah. And the, well, and I meant to tell and... you. Did did you see that the end of that log had a tag on it? Yeah, I found that. Did you? And I okay, it, good. You know. I, I was, was like, oh crap, I forgot. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah if any conservation right officer finds yeah. finds it, uh, yeah. no, I. Uh, that was that was that was definitely one of the. That was probably the third or fourth log I went and milled somewhere. Like the free logs I pick up. Um, my first one was doing a hickory with the sawmill. I probably did an ash with one of my tree guys. Um, and then this one. And I went and did this one by myself. And I was telling Phil. I remember this lady. It was miserable. It was in some lady's backyard. They, She had this red oak tree taken down. And the... Uh, the... She had somebody come out and cut it up for firewood, but he didn't want to cut up the trunk because it was too big or heavy or whatever. So I got back there with the sawmill, and it was a very sketchy, like, getting into that backyard. with the That would have been with my ram at the time, my ram and my sawmill. And the sawmill was shorter at the time. Um, and just the grade that this thing was on. Like, I think when I put my ramps on to roll the log onto the mill, the ramps were pretty much horizontal to the ground. You know, it was like... It was one of those, like, the log just rolled straight onto the mill and didn't go up at all because of how big a grade this was on. It was miserable. And those were so heavy when they were wet. Um, I was sweating my butt off. Probably thinking it was the dumbest thing I've ever done. And now I did it all for this moment so Phil could turn that log into a shelf designed by John. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So... I was just say I, I always think it's main, like you just brought in one board. It's not a very big shelf project, but it's like, oh, how am I going to get all the parts from this? But it's like two inches thick, and you're yeah. playing it yeah. all down and resaw it, and you're like, I got enough for two shelves here. Yeah, yeah and no, it's pretty to cool. be to be fair, I kept like I kept that board because that was the nicest one out of all of them because mm -hmm. it's it's purely quarter saw and it had the crack mm -hmm. right down the center from the heart. Um, it had a lot of fleck figure in it, which was really cool uh, in red oak, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had sold a few of those. I told Phil I, I had sold a few of those boards. I think I sold them for like two hundred bucks a piece. Like I sold two of them. Um, not not the course on. That was that was the private reserve. That's going to be a little bit more. Yeah, that's going to yeah. you, you know charge that back. You know. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. so, double. Yep. So no, I I was I mean if I'm selling somebody a log or pieces of a log, you know, you know, uh, like a, a through and through, or you know whatever uh most of the time they don't want the centerpiece because it has the crack down it right even though most of the time that quarter on figure on oaks um on walnut it's just really straight as is with cherry but i still really like that like i like having that really straight grain i'm oh, completely yeah. cool with people not wanting to buy the center cut because 
that's what I want. Like that's the mm-hmm. private reserve collection that's, that goes that's in the, the back. prime. <laughs> yeah, choice. yes, that's center cut. cut. <laughs> yep, chop. that's, that's mm-hmm. exactly what it is. Yeah, that's where the flavor is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. loin well chop marbled. of the wood. Yeah. Uh, Tell us you live in an agricultural state yeah. without <laughs> saying you live in an agricultural yeah. state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So no, it was pretty cool because it, I, and I totally agree. It's just. You see those boards were, it's like, it's right next. It, you had it on top of a stack of some of the burr oak. Yep. And at first glance, it's not any different. And there's a, I think that, did we figure out that that was a walnut board that's over there too? That's rough sawn? Or I th- was that I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know what that one is either. And then it's just amazing. Now, it's an now amazing to be transformation. Very, yeah, to be very clear. Uh, the air drying process does like stain and age the boards. Right. Right. However, once I get my driveway moved and everything, and I move all my logs and stuff around and I get everything drying on the North side of this building, uh, my five year plan, (laughs) hopefully the, this summer plan, but, uh, my plan is to get everything under roof. So hopefully it doesn't dry to that degree where it's like, I could still see the grain without running it through the plane. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, because I think, uh, the walnut trees that everything's sitting under, I think that exponentially makes the dark staining worse. Okay. So maybe. Yeah. Cause I've, I've seen my stuff at, uh, or I've seen stuff at, uh, Bobby three fingers house and he has his all drying for the most part under a shelter and it doesn't it doesn't age like this, so um, I think it's being under trees and not always covered. I try to cover it until we have a windstorm come through, and then the, my steel's in the neighbor's yard next door. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, stands to reason. Yeah. So, all right, I think that wraps up another episode of the Shop Notes podcast. Uh, Tune in next week where we'll continue on with our discussion here, especially about the oddball clamps that we were going to get to, but just didn't to today. So special shout out to tight bond who sponsors today's episode. If you don't want to use grandma's candles, you can also use diluted wood glue to seal your turning blanks and saw logs. So check them out. They have a wide variety of other glues, in many different applications. I have two bottles here that are going to come with me on a family vacation for a special little craft project. So you want to check that out, tightbond.com. If you have any questions, comments, or smart remarks, you want to leave those on our show notes page where you can watch the podcast on our YouTube channel or send us an email, woodsmith at woodsmith.com. Click all the subscribing and liking and bells and whatever else you see there and help us spread the word about the podcast. Thanks, everybody. Bye.